Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video we will be going back to the model engine series with the third novel Infernal Devices. The series was written by Philip Reeve and this novel was published in 2005. A link to the playlist that includes the first two novels will be in the upper right corner. The events in this novel takes place 16 years after the events in Predator's Gold. Before we begin I'd like you to subscribe, give us a like and drop us a comment and now Infernal Devices. Our story begins on a black isle where the stalker Shrike has just been awakened. When he is first awakened, he remembers the face of a girl looking down at him and her name, Hester. But after the second bolt of electricity goes through him, he forgets her name and just remembers her face. He was awakened by Dr. Inoni Zero of the Green Storm Resurrection Corps, who informs him that he will be working for the Green Storm from now on. 15-year-old Ren Natsworthy, Tom and Hester's daughter, had a fight with her mother and feeling bored, snuck out of the house that night to go walking around the city. As she got down to the lower part of the city, she saw Carl leave his house and she decided to follow him. She followed him out of the city onto the beach where he met with a man who he called Goggle. Goggle wanted Carl to do something for him, but Carl refused telling him he won't turn him in, but if he does anything to harm the people, he will. Then Carl left, and when, before she could sneak away, Goggle, who had noticed her, called her. He invited her on to his limpet, the Utilicus, so he could talk to her. There were two other people with him, a girl named Ramona and a young boy named Fishcake. He told her that girls were now admitted to the lost boys and that he knew her father, Tom Natsworthy and her mother Hester Shaw. He told her all he wanted was a small book made of tin that would be in Margravine's library. He told her that she could ask her father where the book was because her father used to nose around museums and libraries. And Ren, who was bored in this little town and was thinking that this is a great adventure, agreed to ask her father. They promised to meet at noon the next day and Ren left. After Ren was out of sight, Goggle told Ramona that he will have fish cakes set up a couple of crab cams around Ren's house so they'll know if she squeals to the people about them. And if she does, then they'll kill them all and he will let Ramona kill Ren. The next morning, in a meadow across the lake from Anchorage in Vineland, Hester had gone hunting and she bagged a deer, all the time thinking that her daughter hates her because she's ugly and remembering the times when her daughter was young and her looks didn't matter. Ren finally woke up, went and washed up, and then went outside to greet her dad who was chopping wood. She questioned him about the lost boys and he happened to mention that Goggle was the one that gave the map to Kaol who ended up leading them here to Vineland. She then went into town and talked Freya Rasmussen into letting her see the book so she would know where it was. The book was made of sheets of tin with letters and numbers scratched into it, with a picture on the front of the presidential seal of the American Empire. That information was once on a document made of paper, but once the paper began to fall apart, they transferred the information onto old food tins that was hammered flat. Of course, the people had no idea what they was copying, they just knew that they were supposed to keep it safe. Ren went down to the beach where she met her mother coming back from her hunting trip with the dead deer. They got to arguing, Ren mounted off and Hester slapped her. Ren then ran off with Hester telling her to get back here. Ren went straight to her meeting with Goggle. She told him she found the tin book but wanted to know why he needed it. He told her that Professor Penny Royal has written a book that exposed the Grimsby and the Lost Boys and since then they've had a very hard time getting into the raft cities and that now some of the limpets have been disappearing. So he's hoping there's information in the tin book that will allow him to build a better submarine. She told him that she will go and get it and bring it to him, but her price is that when he leaves, he takes her with him. Meanwhile, Schweiker is being worked on at the Stalker Works in the Rogue's Roost by Dr. Zero. 
and while she's working on him she brings him up to date on all of the things that have happened in the 17 years since he's been dead when she was finished with him she took him to see their leader stalker fang who is at forward command which is a captured four tiered city on the northern end of rustwater marshes the first person to meet is dr papjoy who is the commander of the resurrection corps they presented him as a birthday gift to Stalker Fang, who added him to her staff. Back in Anchorage, Wen went and stole the book and then went home and waited for her parents to go to sleep. Then she snuck out of the house and headed down towards the beach. She was stopped by Carl, who tried to talk her out of going, but she went around and kept going. So he went to Tom and Hester and told him what was going on, and Hester grabbed her gun and headed out after Ren. When Ren got to Goggle and handed him the book, he told her that he wasn't taking her. That's when her mother showed up and Goggle made a mistake. He pulled a gun and shot at Hester. Hester promptly killed him. And as Ramona was pulling her gun, Hester killed her. Fishcake then put Goggle's gun against Ren's chin and said, drop the gun or I'll kill her. Fishcake dragged Ren into the ship and closed the ramp. Hester tried to shoot the hydraulics but missed. The ship then submerged taking Ren away, who by this time had fainted. Carl told Hester and Tom that he would take them to Grimsby in his old limpid, the screwworm, which he's been working on off and on, and although it didn't look it, it was seaworthy. On the Atelicus, Ren and Fishcake are headed for Grimsby when they received a message, a repeated message, from a resort wife called Brighton. The message kept saying they are the parents of children that was abducted from Raft towns and uh, looking for their children. They invited the kids to come in the submarines where they'll be reunited with their parents. Fishcake, who's only 10 years old, asked Ren what he should do and Ren convinced him that they should give it a shot. But it turned out to be a trap. The Brighton would lure them in and then sell them as slaves to the Skin Corporation. So Fishcake and Ren were branded with the Skin logo and were now slaves. Ren also learned at the time that Nimrod Pennyroyal was the mayor of Brighton. Back in Anchorage, Tom, Carl and Hester were on the screwworm ready to shove off when Freya showed up saying that she's going with them and they couldn't talk her out of it. So the four of them headed off to Grinsby. Ren was in the slave pens of the Shkin Corporation building. When Nabishko Shkin, the owner of the corporation, called to see her. He had the thin book and wanted to know what it was. And she told him that it came from Anchorage and he didn't believe her because Penny Royal, the mayor, had wrote that he was on Anchorage when it sunk and barely escaped with his life. Ren managed to talk Nabisco into having her see Penny Royal. Nabisco says he's going to question Fishcake. In Batmonk Saka, Dr. Inoni Zero has finally been promoted to a surgeon mechanic in charge of Stalka Fang, which means that she's now in charge of the Resurrection Corps. Dr. Papjoy is finally being allowed to retire. Dr. Zero has been working towards this goal ever since she was forced to turn her brother into a stalker. She's finally in a position to assassinate Stalker Fang. Meanwhile, back in Brighton, Ren has been moved into a much better cell. She was given Penny Royal's last book to read, and she realized that most of the book is all lies, and she grew afraid that he might try to kill her just to shut her up. Nabisco had questioned Fishcake, who told him where Anchorage was and told him how to find Grinsby. Penny Royal had Brighton fly over where Grimsby was underwater and then drop depth charges on it. That seemed to have destroyed some of it. Then they headed for the African coast. That's when some soldiers, along with Nabisco, came to get Ren and take her up to Cloud Nine, which is where Penny Royal had his palace. Cloud Nine, which was floating above Brighton, was anchored to it. It was floating via the use of gas bags. Nabisco was going to confront Penny Royal and then use Ren to back him up. But Ren, who was afraid that Penny Royal would have her killed, lied and said that she was a member of the Lost Boys. Penny Royal ended up taking her as a household servant and taking the tin book. The first thing Nabisco did when he got back down to the Brighton was to make sure that Fishcake could find Anchorage again and he was going to go there and capture everybody and turn them into slaves as revenge for Ren not backing him up. 
When the screwworm got down to Grimsby, they found it almost totally destroyed. The only thing that was left standing and still watertight was the town hall. They went in and found lots of dead boys and the survivors were the youngest boys. Some of the boys left because they heard on the radio that their mommies and daddies was looking for them. So that caused a big fight and those left. And after they left, there came the depth charges that destroyed most of the underwater city. Carl took them to see Uncle. Uncle was a very old man now. And Uncle told them that Wren was probably on Brighton, where the lost boys went to. He said he tried to tell them it was a trap, but they didn't listen. That's when Carl betrayed his friends and locked them in Goggles' old quarters, saying, Uncle knows best. In Tianjin, Dr. Zero went to a Christian chapel. She needed to talk to someone. So, although she didn't believe in Christianity, she decided to pray. She didn't know that she was followed by Shrike. In her prayer, she asked God for strength and guidance and if she should kill Stalker Fang. Shrike heard her prayer, but later when he tried to kill her, he couldn't. And when he tried to tell on her, he couldn't either. That's when he realized that she had put something in his mind to stop him. But he was determined to find a way to put a stop to her plan once he found out what it was. Back in Grimsby, Carl spoke to Uncle until he fell asleep. Then he went down and freed his friends. He explained to them that he did this because he doesn't want them to get hurt and he doesn't want Uncle to get hurt. There was a larger submarine that Uncle came to Grimsby in and that's the submarine that Carl was going to set up so that everyone, including the kids, could leave it and go back to Anchorage. He was planning to stay with Uncle. But while he was fixing up the submarine, Uncle woke up and came out and caught them. Freya tried to convince him to come with them, but he remembered how Anna Fang betrayed him. So he shot at what he thought was Freya's face, but instead he ended up shooting at the big screen where her face was on and that bullet ended up popping the balloons and causing the screen to fall on top of him and kill him. Tom and Hester hopped in the screwworm and headed for Brighton while Freya, Carl and the kids hopped in the larger submarine and headed back to Anchorage. When Freya, Carl and the kids got back to Anchorage, Freya opened up the upper floors of the Winter Palace so each of the kids had their own room. Then Carl and Freya got married. The day after her marriage, she prayed to the Ice Guards to keep Tom and Hester safe and lead them to Wren and may they come back home safe. Wren is now a slave in a Penny Royal household working for Mrs. Boo Boo Penny Royal. She's trying to figure out a way to escape but has been unable to come up with a way because she's up on cloud nine and the only way down is by cable car which is guarded and even if she makes her way down she has the skin corporation sign branded on her hand penny royal also finds out from his antique dealer walter plovery that the numbers in the thin book is a computer code an ancient computer code penny royal tells plovery that he's going to take care of trying to sell it himself which annoys Plovery, who immediately goes and passes that information on to Nabisco, who has told Plovery to go and steal it for him. Wren saw where the mayor had his pleasure yard parked, and she got the idea that she could steal it and escape, but she needed a pilot. So she went and asked Theo Ngoni, who was a captured Green Storm Tumblr pilot, and now a slave like her. But he turned her down saying he can't go home again because he had run away from his father to go and become a green storm pilot. So she decides she's going to do it herself. After all, how hard could it be? After the Brighton entered the Middle Sea, someone put a message in a stalker dove and sent it flying. And it flew all the way to Tianjin where the message was delivered to stalker Fang. She then called General Naga who is the commander of her elite air legion and told him to ready an assault unit, make her ship ready for battle, that they would be leaving her Brighton with the dawn. Penny Royal was having a dinner party that night and he invited Plovery. And after the dinner party was over and all the guests left, Plovery hid in one of the mayor's galleries. That night, Wren snuck out and went and looked at the pleasure yacht. The gas bags were filled, but it had no fuel. Tricked the aviators into fueling it, then she went back to get her friend Cynthia. Meanwhile, Plovery snuck into the mayor's office using a key that was given to him by Nabisco, who got it from the lost boys. 
He went straight to where the mayor's safe was. He knew the combination because he had figured it out by watching the mayor open his safe several times. He got the safe open, took out the tin book, and sensing something behind him, he turned. Meanwhile, Ren was on her way to the dormitory when she heard a loud scream. When Ren left her hiding place, she ran into Theo, and both of them then ran into Boo Boo, who took them along with her to go and see who had screamed. When they got to the mayor's office, they found Plofuri dead on the floor with a stab wound, and he was still clutching the tin book in his hand. The mayor Penny Royal came along and quickly grabbed the book and put it back in his safe. That's when the aviatrix Ola Wombly came in and pointed out Ren, saying that she tricked her boys into refueling the sky yacht. At which point, Penny Royal then accused Ren of being in on it and trying to escape with the contents of his safe. He also accused Theo of being in on it with her. That's when Boo Boo came to the rescue, lying to protect them. Apparently, Boo Boo did it because she thought that Ren and Theo were in love, and she's a romantic at heart. Since the Brighton was anchored in the Middle Sea, they had turned off their sonar, so Tom and Hester were able to sneak on without any trouble. Once in the Brighton, they split up to look for Ren. Both Tom and Hester found out at the same time that all of the boys and girls that were caught became slaves, the property of the Shkin Corporation. Hester, meanwhile, was walking around and ran into a museum dedicated to Penny Royal. When she went in and began looking around and talking to the curator, that's when she learned that Penny Royal had written a book in which he said that Hester had sold Anchorage to Archangel, and that immediately worried her because she was afraid that if Tom found out, he would stop loving her. Climbing to the top of the museum, she found the Jenny Hanover that was renamed the Arctic Roll. Apparently, the story that Penny Royal told was that Hester, as she was dying, gave it to him. When Hester got back to the place where she was to meet Tom, he wasn't there, but a slave girl handed her a note from him that said that he knew that Ren was a slave, so he was going to the pepper pot to see about buying her back. On board the Requiem Vortex, which is the flagship of Stalker Fang's air fleet that was headed to the Middle Sea to take on the Brighton, no one knew why Stalker Fang was taking them to the Brighton when there were better targets about. And Inoni Zero, who was with them, was still wondering if she should kill Stalker Fang and that if she does, the middle of a war would be the best time to do it. She didn't know that Shrike was watching her closely, waiting for her to make her move. Tom, meanwhile, goes to the pepper pot to see Nabiskushkin, assuming that all he has to do is explain everything to Nabisco and he would get his daughter back and they can go home. Of course, that's not what happened. The minute Tom meets Nabisco, he has two men knock him out and take him down into one of the cells. After he's captured Tom, Nabisco tells him, The mayor of this city is a very irritating man, Mr. Nasworthy. I believe that you may be able to help me expose him as a fraud and a liar. But first, your daughter will help me retrieve something that he has stolen from me. Who knows? If you cooperate, I just might free you. Hester, of course, figures that since Tom didn't come back out, uh, he must have been captured. And she sets about planning to free him. During the party, up on cloud nine, Nabisco confronts Ren and tells her to steal the tin book for him. He shows her proof that he has her father Tom and says if she doesn't, Tom will die. So she has no choice but to do it. And as she heads away, the Green Storm fleet is coming closer to Brighton. On board the Requiem Vortex, Shrike speaks to Stalker Fang and she tells him that she's heard about the tin book and she knows what it's information pertains to and that they're there to collect the tin book. Hester got into the pepper pot by shooting out the camera. When the guard came out to look at the camera, she killed him and went in and then began killing the guards as she met them. When she didn't find Tom or Ren on the first floor, she gave the keys to one of the lost boys and made her way up to the second floor. As Ren is headed towards Penny Royal's office, she runs into Theo and she tells him everything and gets him to help her. They get into Penny Royal's office and Ren opened the safe and grabbed the book and out of the safe came a stalker dove that Theo was able to kill. Theo leaves and Ren cleans up the place so nobody will notice and while she's cleaning up the place, she feels the whole place tremble and then it quieted down. 
she finishes and leaves, putting the key back in its place. Then as she begins to walk away, she hears someone coming, so she runs into the control room whose door was open and closes it. Theo was in there. The pilot was dead and other controls were smashed. He said that he heard somebody call for help and when he came in, this is how he met it. But just then they saw a green storm air destroyer headed towards them. Meanwhile, Tom is in a cell when Fishcake comes to see him. He tells Tom that Ren is on Cloud 9 and Tom promises to take him when they leave. Then he hears shooting and yelling, then he runs off leaving Tom behind. It was Hester who came and rescued Tom. Hester kills the remaining guards and leads Tom downstairs where Tom finds Fishcake and Hester was all for leaving him but Tom insisted that they bring him with them so they all left together. And that's when the green storm attacked. Most of the airships was attacking the Brighton itself but the Requiem Vortex was headed for Cloud 9. During the chaos of the attack, Ren and Theo got the idea of stealing the pleasure yacht and escaping but they couldn't get near it because of all the chaos that was going on. Meanwhile, down in the Brighton, the Lost Boys and the other slaves had freed themselves and had joined in the attack. Ren and Theo were finally able to get to the yacht, but then they were stopped by Cynthia, who was Greenstorm Agent 28. But Penny Royal was in the gallery above them, and he dropped a suitcase on her head, knocking her out, possibly killing her. He grabbed a thin book, and he was going to take Ren and Theo with him, but... That's when the yacht rolled out of the gondola with Nabisco at the controls. Penny Royal saw it and went running, trying to get Skin to take him, but Skin leaned out and shot him twice. Skin then got down, grabbed the suitcase that was full of money, and took off, leaving Ren and Theo behind. By this time, Cloud Nine had drifted over the African coast, and the storm soldiers had captured Ren and Theo. Meanwhile, Nabisco thought he had escaped, but after a while he was attacked by stalker birds that ripped his. And while the yacht was falling, the birds got into the gondola with him and began ripping him apart. The book is taken from Ren and all of them are taken to see Stalker Fang, who reads the book and memorizes the codes. Dr. Zero then comes and takes Ren and Theo with her, and when they get downstairs, she asks them about the book. And when they tell her all they know, she realizes that the book is an artifact of the ancients and that it probably points the way to a weapon of the ancients that's probably more dangerous than the one that destroyed London. She then quickly runs to Shrike and he is looking at her trying to figure out what her weapon is. It's not until she says a sentence to him that he realizes he is the weapon. He attacks Stalker Fang and they both begin to fight. Dr. Zero, who is watching the fight, yells that she designed him to defeat Stalker Fang, and he does, ripping her apart and throwing the parts off Cloud Nine. That's when he regains his memory of Hester, the only good thing that he feels he has ever done. Meanwhile, back on the Brighton, Hester led them to the Jenny Hanover that was parked in Penny Royal's museum. And while Fishcake was outside of the Hanover looking around, Jenny blasted a hole in the wall and took off, leaving him behind. And while Tom begged her to turn around, she refused. Back on Cloud Nine, which was slowly falling out of the sky because it was on fire, Ren and Theo found Penny Royal, who wasn't dead. One bullet had hit the tin book and the other one grazed his skull, knocking him out. And while Ren was helping him, the storm began leaving Cloud Nine. General Naga, who was second in command, now assumed command, found Dr. Zero and thanked her for killing Stalker Fang. He said she was a good leader in the first few years, but now she keeps wasting men and ships. Then he ordered all of the soldiers to head back to Tianjin, and he decided to take the prisoners with him. Hiding on Cloud Nine was Shrike, who decided to stay because he had seen Ren and he saw the resemblance between her and Hester and he decided if he stayed, she might lead him to Hester. Fishcake had managed to escape the Brighton because the Lost Boys were trying to kill him because he had betrayed them. So he's walking in the desert and he comes across the remnants of Stalker Fang. Some of them were still alive. He comes across her head and it tells him to repair it and he says he doesn't know how and it said that it will tell him how. So he went and began gathering up all the pieces of her body. On Cloud Nine, 
penny royal who had come through told Ren that everything in the book was a lie except the part where her mother sold Anchorage to Archangel. Then the Jenny Hanifer caught up with them and landed on a slowly falling cloud nine. At first, everything was good because everybody was happy to see each other. But then Hester learned that Penny Royal was alive. At first, she was going to kill him. But that's when Ren told Tom that Hester had sold Anchorage to Archangel. That's when Hester walked away, telling Tom that he should take the Jenny Hanover and leave before Penny Royal steals it again. Tom tried to go after her, but collapsed and Ren and Theo had to take him into the Jenny Hanover and take off. Meanwhile, Hester ran into Shrike, who told her that he missed her, and when the Cloud Nine finally crashed, he walked into the desert carrying her. And that's how the book ends. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't, give us a like, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.